Consumers may be shopping again. Could retail companies be getting ready to do some bargain hunting for themselves? The M&A market has been red hot this year, more than $260 billion in takeovers in the first quarter. My next guest founded one of the nation's leading mergers and acquisitions firms, uh, concentrating especially in retail. Gilbert Harrison founded Financo in 1971. He is its chairman. Gilbert, thank you for coming in. Good Appreciate afternoon. It. So obviously we've seen a lot of deals generally already this year. Uh, within retail, there are the deals that have happened, Jim Bree and Jay Crew. There are the deals that have been talked about when you talk about big lots or some of the other well, uh, discount retailers. Well, Fabric Center also just closed uh, so, with it, Leonard Green as well. Which I we, mean, we obviously, were, there's a lot of activity. I mean, what do you think is sort of the, the main driver? What are folks looking for right now? I think people are feeling better than they felt in the last three years. I know that uh, our backlog and the things we're working on, uh, we're busier now than we've been uh, since 2007. I think that both the strategic and the financial buyers are out there in force. Uh, they're looking at a lot of different products. The pricing is going up, but they are able to get more bank debt than they've had in the past. Uh, the banks are opening up, uh, but people are feeling better them about themselves, and the consumer is coming back. People are, are concerned about the potential rising prices of goods and services that I know you were talking about before. But I heard some good news today that cotton prices, in fact, have stabilized and are going down. Whether that's true, because I know it's against the trend of what was heard, but I heard this from very good sources in China. You know, private equity, it seems to me, uh, Gilbert, that private equity keeps looking for, one, the player. They want the person who's going to run the business. So they, in both Jimbery and with Mickey, obviously, J. Crew, they were also buying talent. And I think that is a crucial part of what they are also looking for. Internet is also another part of it, where they could take brands and they can now move it out to different channels and also to China, Russia, and the Middle East. Are you seeing that as, a, as, as the kinds of brands oh, that they're looking for? E-commerce. E well, everybody has to be a multi-channel retailer. I think if you take a look at what happened uh, yesterday with the announcement of eBay buying GSI, um, it certainly is a game changer because it allows eBay now to go directly to the consumer uh, with some of the brands that GSI represents, whether it's Ralph Lauren, whether it's Estee Lauder. I mean, they have just a host of products. And instead of, uh, they could never have sold to Amazon because of the anti-competitive situations and the fact that uh, Amazon's selling a lot of things uh, that others don't. So it's a very interesting thing, and Michael Rubin, who built GSI, has done a wonderful job with that. What's interesting, though, is that Rule of Law, which is another one of these e-commerce plays, is going to stay independent of, uh, of eBay, although they'll own 30 percent of it. It'll still be owned 70 percent uh, by uh, the old shareholders. I mean, Rule of Law seemed like it was a little bit on the side of what the deal was really all about. And I know Ruben e from yeah. Reebok days yeah, and right. did this right. the very beginning of when they were starting up. And I think it is a great deal for both eBay and for GSI. Rule of Law seems to be a little bit of a a little bit on the side in terms of what it does for, for an eBay. Do you think we see more activity, though, in the pure Internet plays like Arula La? We were talking about guilt a few, moments, a few minutes ago. Diapers.com, of course, uh, got already gobbled up. Do you think we're going to see more uh, of that? Drugstore.com just I, recently. Mm -hmm. um, the answer is yes, but the key game in e-commerce is still the multi-channel retailer, the retailer that is selling both in the bricks and mortar stores, the catalog, and the internet. And anybody that's any good has to sell in all of these channels. Why, why is that, though? I mean, you would think that, that you know, I mean, Amazon doesn't do that, but they're the biggie. But, you know, the thinking for a while there was bricks and mortar, you have to worry about additional costs, why do you want to have to deal with that? really you got to go the way of e-commerce only. I, I think it depends upon the type of company. The consumer still likes to touch and feel. They still like to see the goods. I mean, Jay, uh, you're one of the longest standing apparel merchants that I know. I mean, I'm sure you agree with that, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. And I think it's using the inventory in a creative way. If you can, if you can build it on all, in all the channels, that is the ultimate way. There are very few people that do it really well. There's a different expertise in running retail than a wholesale selling out to other retailers or now internet. The people that are doing it well are 
are, are really going to maximize their business. But it's, it's use of inventory. Mm -hmm. It's how, how you flow goods to consumers. It's innovation, how fast you can, you can get to market. I think all these things are so important. But it's also one of the reasons why uh, some of the major brands, including Ralph Lauren, use a GSI as a platform, or Lauder uses a GSI as a platform, because they know GSI can probably do it better than they do it themselves. Absolutely. However, the limited does it themselves, and they do it perfectly well themselves. So everybody has a different DNA. Uh, just you mentioned pricing a minute ago that you know you are seeing more premiums for some of these deals. Do you think they're too high in some cases so far? They're not as high as they were in 2007. I mean, well, they were definitely <laughs> probably too high in 2007 going right. into a recession. But you know, what about now? I think it goes back to the old story. What's the growth rate of the company? How is the company performing? How good, as Jay said, is the management? Is the management going to continue when they get a wad of cash to put in their pocket or stock to put in their pocket? I mean, there are so many different considerations when you're doing a transaction in terms of pricing. Um, uh, that you have to look at. So you look at the multiple, it isn't just the pure multiple, it's where are you in the scale of your whole business? What are you doing to innovate yourself? Okay. What are you doing to growing? And so on. All right, Gilbert, we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming in. Good to see you. My pleasure. With Gilbert Harrison of Financo. I'll be